Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Uh, he is a missionary from, from the United States to Haiti. His family planted it in 1983, 40 years ago. And from the beginning, amen, from the beginning, my mom and dad and his mom and dad have been connected, and, and we've been a sponsor to that mission in Haiti and Dominican Republic. So we are celebrating 40 years with new missions, amen. 40 years of a family called to a foreign land. And you know, my calling is to raise up pastors to equip, and, and, and we're able to do that in a foreign land, both Haiti and Dominican Republic. So today, to minister to you guys today is, is really a really, really good friend of mine, Tim Tatellis. Would you guys welcome him to the stage? Thank you, Pastor Mike and Family Church. You have been modeling generosity for four decades, 40 years of preaching the gospel. Isn't that amazing in Haiti and the Dominican Republic? Wow. And I'm honored to be here today with you and to share a message on my heart titled, The Vision God Has for You. Maybe you've heard this verse before. I'd love for you to join me in reading it aloud this morning as we begin. It's found in John 3.16. You're familiar with it, aren't you? Let's read this together aloud. For God, we're going to put it up on the screen. Hold on one moment. Here we go. We're going to put it up there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. I have been reflecting on this verse because this was the catalyst for us to go start a mission. And 40 years ago, in reflecting on this verse, I often hold on to that word love. Isn't that beautiful? For God so loved the world. How generous he was with his love. But recently, digging a little bit deeper, I've been looking at that word perish. Because if we did not go to Haiti 40 years ago, how many lives would be lost in souls that did not learn about the gospel? And so this morning, I hope and pray, maybe, maybe there's one of you or two of you or, or a few of you that will go from here today, surrendered to the vision that God has for you. And it is my hope and prayer that we will reflect on this verse, John 3, 16, with a new and a fresh perspective as we discover God's vision. So let me pray with us this morning. God, I thank you for my church family here at Family Church. It is not by accident that we have gathered here today, but God has been providential the last 40 years of partnership and ministry together, surrendered to the vision you have had upon our lives. So God, for each person that is here right now, Lord, may we pause and allow you to speak to us the vision you have for our lives, that we won't miss out on living our lives on mission for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I grew up in a preacher's home. My dad was a pastor for 25 years here in the United States, and dad was pastoring a church on 135 Belmont Street, in Worcester, Massachusetts. And the church that we lived in was this building I have a photo of today. And inside that church, we lived as a family for five years. Now, let me tell you, as a bratty preacher's kid, <laughs> it was the perfect place to play one of my favorite games, hide-and-go-seek. Anybody? <laughs> hide-and-go-seek. Playing hide-and-go-seek in church is the real deal, okay? And in this building, what was great was up at the, in the worship center, off to the side, there was a door that you could go inside that door, open it up, and there was a staircase that led up to the attic 
of the church. And if you were brave enough, you could push and pop open a wooden panel that would lead you to the rooftop of the church. And there I would hide from my friends. <laughs> it was the perfect spot to play hide and seek in church. Any of you ever play hide and seek? Come on now. Y'all remember hide and seek? If you could not find your friend, what would you shout out to them to try to get them to come out from hiding? What would you shout out? Ollie, Ollie, I'm from free. What would you shout out? Let me hear you. Do any of us know anyone that just might be hiding from God today? Or maybe there's some of us that may be here in church and in church hiding from God today. And today I want us to see the vision that God has for us. And that vision is Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And I don't want you to hide from that. You see, on the outside of our church building, some of the men from the church came together and got some wood and they carved out these letters to mount on the side of the church on 135 Belmont Street. Jesus loves you. Repeat after me. Jesus loves you. One more time. Jesus loves you. J-E-S-U-S -S loves you. And on the side of that church building, we had this vision for that city. But what you can't see is across the street was a hospital. And the phone would ring during the week of people that would look out the windows and see the vision. And they would call and thank us and then show up at church. And friends, this week, as you go from here, there are people in your life, your neighbors, your family members, your coworkers, that are going to see how much Jesus loves them by the way that you love them. See, this month we're celebrating 40 years of new missions, but I also celebrated my wedding anniversary this month. Yeah. And come on. Hubbies and ladies, you know what it's like. You want to do something special for your sweetheart. And my wife's name is Cheryl. I call her beautiful. And so on our anniversary day, we went out for dinner. And hey, can I tell you something I didn't tell first service? So we went out to dinner, and, the, and actually the food wasn't the best. So you know what we did? We went around the corner and got a large pepperoni pizza <laughs> with extra cheese. <laughs> Woo! We went home and had some pizza. It was a winner, I'll tell you. I don't know about that, but that's, that's the Italian love that just came out of me for all of you, okay? <laughs> but that anniversary night, you know, celebrating, and the next morning, the first Saturday of the year, you would think, you know, as husband and wife, it's our anniversary weekend, we'd kind of like slip away and do a little vacay and celebrate, you know, yeah, hoo -hoo. And I'm like, you know, beautiful, what if we gave up our Saturday morning, kicking off the new year, and invited some neighbors to meet us for breakfast. And on the first Saturday of the new year, we had 16 neighbors gather for breakfast together, all walks of life, because I wanted them to see that Jesus loves them. And see, people are looking at us and they can see the vision that we have for them as we show them. There's enough speaking going on. There's enough saying loudly. But is the actions of our life showing people how much we love them that I'm willing to give up a Saturday to invite neighbors together, to gather for a meal together, to feel loved and to feel connected, to build community in the place that we live. Because in Haiti, growing up there, children would come to our schools and then they would begin to tell us that Jesus loves me, this I know, 
for the missionary told me so, or the teacher told me so, and for you and I today, we'll go from here, and may there be a neighbor that says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for my neighbor told me so, or for my coworker told me so. But first, we have to see the vision that God has for our lives. And I know that God has a vision for us because the Hebrew word for the vision that God has over our lives, even before we were born, is the word kazon in the Hebrew. Kazon is the vision that God sees for us. And I know there's great meaning in that vision because that word in the Hebrew, kazon, rhymes with calzone. <laughs> Repeat after me, calzone. Amen, I want some more calzone in my life. <laughs> I want the vision of God for my life. But first, I have to see the vision, and that vision is Jesus yeah. loves me yeah. so I can go love someone. Amen. And then my mom and dad, they went from this little church, a very humble beginning on 135 Belmont Street, only 100 people attended that church, barely. And my dad had learned about the islands of the Caribbean because he was a sailor. And living here in the Northeast, you want to escape the cold winters. And so he dreamed of sailing to the Caribbean and read about the islands and learned that the western third of the island of Hispaniola was the poorest country in our hemisphere, Haiti. So back in the 70s, he would go on some short-term trips, give some money away, go back on a follow-up trip and inspect the work and notice that it just wasn't making the impact he thought it could have. So as a stubborn Italian, he thought to himself, maybe we can start a mission. So they found a piece of land for sale. It was seven, it was five acres of land for $7,000 on the ocean. 1982, they put a deposit on that land. We came back to our little church, and every first Sunday, we collected a missions offering to pay for the land. And I remember as a kid, we would bring down our coins and our offering and put it in this big bucket, and then downstairs in the basement of the church, I remember as a pastor's kid, we would roll those coins in those paper sleeves. And it took us one year to raise the $7,000. And then on January 6, 1983, my mom and dad moved our family to live on that land. And we lived in these tents for three months. The, this photograph of these tents is one of the earlier iconic photos of our mission when our tents were still on the bare ground. We hadn't gotten smart enough to put them on block on plywood. Where, so when the rain came, we wouldn't get flooded out because it used to get all murky under there and wet. That's actually my mother. She, she's an Italian cook. She could cook some mean food in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but there we lived in these tents for three months to surrender to the vision. Surrender to the vision which involves us serving others. You see, the Son of God came to earth, and Jesus surrendered to a vision. It's found in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And this was what he surrendered to. Would you read it aloud with me in Luke chapter 19, verse 10? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Do you know anyone playing hide-and-go-seek with God right now? And they are lost. And what will we do to help find them? May we surrender to the vision and do whatever it takes to seek and save the lost. But we have to surrender to the vision. But let me open up my heart a little bit more to you. There, there's a complication in this surrendering. Because here in the United States, there's this epidemic called comfort. And we live in a society that 
wants us to become comfortable. I, when the pandemic was happening, I remember there was a crisis when they closed Chick-fil-A. I mean, I had neighbors that were just distraught that Chick-fil-A was closed. And then they did a happy dance when they opened up the drive through <laughs> It was like, praise Jesus, God's chicken's back. <laughs> because we couldn't survive without a fast food restaurant? I mean, I think I can boil some water at home and make some pasta. Can I get a witness? Because the enemy to growth spiritually for us is comfort. You see, pioneers, they live in tents. Settlers build homes. Your pastor Michael and I were talking in between services, and he mentioned to me something profound about this message. He heard first service, and he said, Tim, some of us like to build homes in our hiding places. Some of us are hiding so far from God, we're building a home in the place he wants to have us surrender to the vision. We need to surrender to the vision today and go seek and save the lost. And that happens when we serve others. It gets uncomfortable. You see, this Tuesday is January 31st. That may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. Because it's the last Tuesday of the month. And on the last Tuesday of the month, it's Guys Night Out in the neighborhood. And I've been hosting Guys Night Out going on seven years. And I'll invite over 30 men. You can grab my phone and scroll through and see the text invites to these men. And this Tuesday at 7 o'clock, I fly home from New York Monday night. I'll land in Orlando at 11.28 p.m. And Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, I'm going bowling. And I hate bowling. <laughs> but I love my neighbors. And there's this man who responded to the text invite this week. His name is Chris. He's a police officer in our city. For two and a half years, I invited Chris to Guy's Night Out. And he never came. And finally, he showed up. And then last month, for the first time, he came to my backyard to meet up with some other men from the community to spend some time around the fire pit. Let me just talk to you for a moment. When you get outdoors, conversations open up. Transparency, vulnerability, authenticity. And my neighbor Chris and another neighbor Mike, they were the last two to leave. I had, I had a few guys there that I've been mentoring, some young guys that live in the city. They come out to the country to burn stuff with me, you know? Conversations all over the map. Spiritual stuff, life stuff, work stuff, family stuff. And there's Chris, the cop, the police officer, just soaking it all in, man. He'd never been to the fire pit with us. One of the last to leave. Because I'm willing to be uncomfortable and sometimes spend time with people that are not like me. And when I pick up Chris to go to Guy's Night Out, you know, the language and the conversation is quite rough. But I've been praying the last 18 months, dear Lord, could you entrust me with some non-Christian friends? I'll surrender to the vision. I may be a little uncomfortable. Guard my heart. Tame my tongue. Protect me, Lord Jesus. Let's do this, man. Let's, let's surrender to the vision. Let me serve others. You see, Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and I hope we will do whatever it takes. And we'll be brave with this gospel and not let comfort be the enemy. I like to say it this way. We have to step into a state of spiritual maturity that we become comfortable with discomfort. That the tensions inspire us, that we're in the right direction. There's a little dis discomfort here. But I'm going to stay surrendered. Even when we're sleeping in a tent and using the sugar cane as our bathroom facility and fighting malaria, we're still going to wake up and go to the village and start a church and a school. Even though it was uncomfortable, we are fully surrendered. Who here wants to be surrendered to the vision today that God has for you? 
who will go from this place this morning and say, God, I've been hiding from you in church. But today, send me out. I want to embrace this vision that you have for my life. See, then it takes a bravery, especially in culture today, for you and me to speak the vision. I serve on the board of directors for a radio network in Central Florida. We have 19 radio stations scattering Central Florida. I've known the founder of the radio station since before he started it. And I asked him one day, how do you choose what to put on the radio? He said, well, we have focus groups come to a conference room and they put headphones on and we'll play some music. And we study when they turn up the volume or when they turn it down. And when they turn up the volume, when they pump up the jams, those are the songs we play. And in culture today, society wants to take your faith and your gospel and tune you out. They want to take your volume and shut you off. Today, I'm here to tell you, God wants you and me to speak the vision, and I'm going to let my love for my neighbors be bold, and I'm going to let my generosity be brave, and I'm going to show them how much Jesus loves them, because I will show up and help clean up the mess in their front yard after a hurricane hits before I pick up the debris in my own yard. Can I tell you a quick story about a hurricane in Florida? We'll do the second service. You get a bonus real quick. Hurricane hits. Hurricane Irma comes through. Neighbor of mine selling his house under contract, going to close. Front yard just trashed. I text the guys, let's go to Mark and Monica's house. We've got to help them clean up before closing. Mark comes over to my house. We're chatting. He didn't look too good. I'm like, you all right? He goes, no, bro. He goes, the buyers don't want to close now because the electricity is still off from the storm. Mark wasn't too close to God, but he's sitting next to me in my side-by-side -side Polaris, and I look at him, I go, bro, let's pray right now. I shut off the machine, and I say, would it be all right if I pray for us? He goes, sure. God, if it is your will, would you turn on the electricity from Mark and Monica for your glory? In Jesus' name, amen. We start driving back to his house to pick up some more garbage. We go out to his barn, all of a sudden, Monica comes running out of the back of the house shouting, the electricity's on! Mark looks at me like a white ghost. They sold the house. They retired to the mountains of Georgia. And today, he's an elder in his church because God reached him right where he was. Because I wasn't afraid to speak the vision that there is hope in God. But friends, i got to tell you, there's a, a verse in Scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 38. And it says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because... For God so loved the world, he won't let people be separated from him. Because for God so loved the world, he sends us so people aren't separated from him. Nothing can separate those around us from the love of God because God sends us. So this morning, will we be sent to live life on mission, surrender to this vision that God has for our lives, that there is hope in God. See, growing up in Haiti as a missionary kid, and I was involved in doing outdoor evangelism services, and it was challenging. I wasn't comfortable all the time learning the foreign language, and one night I grabbed my Honda four-wheeler and I had a trailer hooked up to the back and I put the sound system on there and the portable generator and the drum set and the keyboard. And I'm driving through the sugarcane fields out to this village on the ocean in Concrab. We had never been there to do an outdoor evangelism service. 
There was no church. There was no well. There was no electricity. They only practiced voodoo. And that night, I set up all the equipment, ran the orange extension cord. The generator wouldn't start. My dad shows up. I'm like, Dad, we can't have church. There's no electricity, no lights. He goes, no, look at the crowd. They're already here. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. There's no competition. It's not like the guy in hut number one has a big screen TV. You know, it's like <laughs> Italian kid, an accordion. They're showing up for this. We had church that night with an oil lamp on a little wooden table. And we began to sing a cappella. Today, bon belle grâce, kuma. When the first time a message of hope was brought to that village, and we gave an invitation that night at the end, anyone here want to respond to the gospel? No response. And finally, again, we asked. And eventually, a young girl about nine years old, she walked through that crowd and came down to the front, and she prayed to make Jesus Lord of her life. And I remember packing up all the equipment and driving back to the mission camp. It was hot, I'm sweating, I'm frustrated. I hadn't had a Snickers bar for months. <laughs> and I'm like, God, aren't you bigger than that? I mean, mom and dad are fighting malaria. We sold the Victorian home outside of Boston and we go to this village to preach the gospel and only, only one person responds. And it was like God hit me over the head with a two by four. And I heard I would have left the 99 to save that one. Yeah. You know, we went back to that village of Concrab again and again and had more services. And eventually we drilled a well, we planted a church and built a school. And today, literally nearly 300 students attend school there. The director and the pastor are graduates of new missions because we did not overlook one. So as we go from here today, I have one question for you. Is there one? Do you know one? Who is going to see the vision that Jesus loves you because of you? Will you surrender to the vision and will you speak the vision that there is hope in God as you go from here today? So I want to invite us all to stand right where we are this morning. As you stand, May we open up our hearts and our minds to surrender to the vision today. You see, friends, when I was living in Haiti as a missionary kid, I had one job. I used to go out and buy Coke for the missionaries. And I would walk one mile one way to a village to buy Coke. And the guy would sell the Coke in an upside-down broken refrigerator with blocks of ice. I couldn't believe I could buy Coke in a village with no electricity, no running water, no church, no school. That neighbor who I helped clean up the front yard and the electricity turned on for, he traveled the world and built plants for Coca-Cola. And I asked Mark, Mark, how on earth can there be Coke in the village of V-Ray, but no, no well, no school, no church? He said, because the mission of Coke was that everyone on the planet would taste Coke. Just by a show of hands, how many here this morning has ever tasted Coke? Show of hands, come on, raise them up high, raise them up high. How many of you have tasted Coke? The mission of Jesus is that the world will hear the gospel. And it's for you and me to be sent and to go speak that vision because we're surrendered to that vision because we have seen that vision. Let's pray together. God, this morning, we're sent. Because of the proximity where we live and work in our homes, you have us in front of people today that need to hear the gospel. Jesus loves them. This I know, because you love them so much you sent us. So thank you for sending us today. We surrender to the vision that you have for our lives, for your glory, because only the power of the gospel changes lives forever. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. 
you can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.